a lot of people have been listening to the privacy challenges, the security challenges, the leaks, uh, uh, the perceived leaks, and the uh, reputation issues that a badly managed social media strategy can actually um, befall a company. Mm -hmm. And a lot of companies are responding by just closing social media down at their corporate firewall and not permitting their staff to actually engage in social media at all. But with people spending more time on Facebook than on Google on a, a daily basis, uh, what this is doing is it's driving employees to use um, social media tools on their personal mobile phones or to use free Wi-Fi at lunch times. Uh, shutting it down at the corporate firewall isn't the answer. Actually having a, an effective set of uh, digital guidelines, social media policies and a really effective crisis management plan in place and going about this in a structured way so that everybody's fully aware of what they actually need to do using social media. Um, then managing it carefully, having a proper social media strategy implementation plan with the social media spokespeople fully on board and engaged with your uh, branding guidelines, your publishing guidelines and your marketing calendar, it, it completely changes the way that your, your company will use social media. Now straight away that sounds like a bit of a resource issue doesn't it? You know we can't afford to employ a whole other person just to interact with Twitter or, or, or Facebook, how would you answer that? Well, it depends on the size of the company, really. If it's a smaller company that can't afford to hire an extra full-time head, then if everybody spends 10% of their time engaging in social media, listening to their co customers, interacting with their customers, and giving out marketing messages to their customers, then it's less of an overhead mm -hmm. on one particular staff member. After all, you have a sales team, you might have a marketing person, and you have a delivery person. If these people are engaged in communicating with their customers using a digital means instead of a face-to-face, -face, then you're just extending your reach and broadening the potential amount of customers that you can work with in the future. Bigger companies, of course, will have the resources to engage a multidisciplinary team that, that includes PR, marketing, um, the technologists itself, uh, the legal team, and HR who will perform social media uh, strategic roles for a very small percentage of their job, but they need to be engaged and they need to be fully cognizant of the tasks that they need to do if something happens. People, people are worried, aren't they, sometimes that they might say something stupid that will reflect badly on their brand, so that might give them pause for thought. But in your mind, is there any reason at all for companies not to be engaged now in social media? It's. It's the same risks as somebody being stupid and saying something uh, out of turn in a pub late at night with other ears listening. Mm. You respect your corporate confidentiality agreement. You respect your employee guidelines. Um, the only, the biggest difference is that the internet is permanent. Um, there is no delete key, mm. and if you delete the offending comment with the uh, caching uh, facility and the screen scraping tools out there, you are never sure that something's completely disappeared. But having a, a, a positive set of behaviours inside a company with good corporate guidelines that everybody is fully trained and aware of, uh, not leaking corporate confidential information, then you can move forward quite successfully with a social media strategy because people know where the guidelines are and where the boundaries are. So if people are cautious perhaps watching this right now, can you give some specific examples of, of those that have had success with their uh, marketing through an online presence? Well I used to work for Microsoft and uh, I uh, cut my teeth on social media in the evangelism team at Microsoft. I managed the IT professional evangelism team. So from an inside perspective, I knew when the product dates were going to be released. I knew all of the marketing activities that were leading up to the beta activities and the launch dates. And I knew which parts of the uh, message were confidential and which bits could be broadcast. I also had an external facing uh, persona online in which I used to communicate very effectively with influencers and journalists and anybody else who would want to read my blog for example. Having your staff know where the boundaries are and what can be talked about 
internally and what can be talked about externally and making sure everybody adheres to this is a, a great way of actually getting um, your staff to become your evangelists whilst respecting your corporate confidentiality. I mean Microsoft is a, a, a big company uh, with an awful lot of bloggers talking about Microsoft and yet how many major leaks do you remember that Microsoft have had? Not so many in eight years or ten years of being social media friendly. So it, it's possible to do in any size company providing you've got some appropriate employee guidelines. So what kind of direct benefits could an organization see for really engaging in social media properly? Is it just a sort of fluffy, it just makes your brand look nicer? Or is there some sales performance increases that could be pointed to? I remember an example that uh, happened about uh, February 2010 when Eurostar trains had a lot of trouble going through the tunnels due to the temperature difference mm. and um, a lot of people were delayed for a huge amount of times trying to get the Eurostar and um, people were stuck in the tunnel and children had a very hard time. People turned to their mobile phones to complain and Eurostar's uh, perception about Eurostar dropped in that period of time. Uh, I saw a tweet in May 2010 when the ash cloud was paralyzing the whole of Europe. There was a, a courier who was trying to bring a transplant organ back from the continent for the Anthony Nolan bone marrow I think it was mm. and he his plane was cancelled and he needed uh, a mechanism to get back to the UK and Eurostar put him on the next train. Fantastic improvement in perception and they would have never known about this guy who was trying to get the organ back no. had he not broadcast this using social media and the power of the community stepped in to help. Um, I had issues with my broadband last week. I uh, live in a, uh, a rural area and I've got very low broadband and uh, I put a message out about my broadband failing and BT came back to me within 36 minutes and uh, an engineer was on point and uh, the interaction with BT online was absolutely fantastic and I find that BT's social media um, response is significantly better than their telephone response. Mm. So uh, that's an example of a company that uses social media to really, really connect with their customers. And that's just two examples. Um, how long have you got? Oh, well, I'm sure there's a lot more in the book. Perhaps you could give me um, some sort of do's and don'ts that you, you cover in your book for businesses that get involved in social media. The most important thing, and this is the uh, conversation I have with all of my clients, is don't start broadcasting first. Listen. Just get a feeling of what's happening out there. Mm. Because if you just launch with your planned marketing campaign, your standard outbound marketing campaign that you've done for years in the past, um, you will fail. You have to listen to find out what people are, are saying about your company anyway. What's their perception about you? If it's your first time in social media, you probably won't be aware whether your customers are talking about you at all mm. until it hits the press. Listen first. Start to interact slowly. Make sure you have advocates inside your company who can help you if your social media endeavors turn into a flood. Have an effective plan have an implementation plan, have a crisis management plan. What happens if your very first launch onto social media overwhelms you with the amount of traffic you get? You need to plan. Plan it for your company and plan it for the future. Don't just broadcast, listen. So would you see this uh, developing in the future? I think, I think most organizations have got some representation in social media, even if they're not doing it very well, haven't they? But where's it gonna go in the next year or two? I think it's important not to get hung up on the application names because five years ago everybody was talking about MySpace. Mm. Now everybody's talking about Twitter and Facebook. Will they still be talking about Twitter and Facebook in five years time? Five years ago there was peer music sharing. Where is that now? Um, so it's important to think about the way that people communicate, the way that people want to help each other um, and focus on the interaction that you want to have with your customers, whether you're going to use social media to advertise your credibility, connect with your customers, connect with journalists, um, customer support, 
or engagements with other technologists or business people around the world so that you can be found with your online brand to raise your awareness, to raise your profile, to improve perception about your company or to use it as an addition to your existing marketing activities which should not go away. Social media is not a replacement for outbound marketing but it's a component uh, that should be blended into your marketing activities. So the way that uh, organisations use social media uh, needs to evolve as well doesn't it because I get the impression that a lot of people use it to broadcast rather than to actually interact. You're so right. People launch their social media strategy uh, like they would launch a marketing campaign mm. and the problem with launching is there's a flurry of activity and then nothing because that's the marketing campaign. You have a great big yeah. TV ad campaign or news print ad campaign or online campaign which you expect click-throughs and then there's no follow-up. The, the fundamental change between uh, standard marketing, standard outbound communications is this is always on marketing. You're having a, a dialogue constantly with your customers. So if you're, if you're already uh, involved in social media from a broadcast point of view and people are listening to the, you because they like your product and they like what you've got to say, start listening to them because they may be your key influencers who will spread your influence out beyond your current network and it's your extended network that will bring you far more customers. Well, uh, you clearly know your stuff, Eileen, and uh, here's the proof. Uh, but what makes you a social media guru? That makes me shudder because social media evolves so much. I don't think you can ever be a true social media guru because the way that applications are evolving are changing and new startups and new applications are coming out every week. And I think anybody that uh, um, proclaims to be a social media expert has finished learning. Right. So uh, I like to think of myself as a social media explorer because the, there are always new things to learn and every week I discover a new way of interacting. Some might uh, come to a brief amount of popularity and then die, others may stay and become the next way that we interact with our business colleagues. So uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to find a different word than guru because yeah. um, guru is almost as if you have learned everything there is to know about a product or service. And I don't think you can ever do that with social media. So can I ask you what motivated you to actually write the book? This is quite a difficult one because I, I'd never imagined that I would write a book. I, I blog every day because I have information and what I used to do 15 years ago is when I found out something new, I used to email all my friends with, an, with a sort of email circle of people that grew and grew and grew. Then when I found that blogging was a way to uh, reach people without sending that email around, I'd put anything interesting onto a blog. And uh, I've been blogging since 2004, so it seemed like a natural way to communicate with people. Writing a book allowed me to crystallize my thoughts and learn that the knowledge that I have is very, very useful to large and small businesses who operate in business to consumer space and business to business. And I realized the more I was writing that it doesn't really matter about the applications, it comes down to the way that people interact with people. Because after all, people buy from people. And people recommend products to other people and it's all about human interaction mm. and with effective human interaction you can put any type of software application on the top but fundamentally it's the way we interact and I just wanted to share the knowledge with other people. Well now I'm following you on uh, Twitter as you know we've already interacted there uh, how can anybody else watching this now uh, get in touch with you, follow you, see what you're up to? Well the easiest way to do it, to do it is to just search for my name uh, you can search for Eileen Brown or you can search for Working the Crowd which will take you directly to uh, the book site. If you search for my name on all of my outbound broadcasts there, uh, there are links to my uh, web page, my blog page, my mobile phone number, my email address and my Twitter handle of course and it's very very easy to search. If you just wanted to interact with me on Twitter then you just go into Twitter and search for my name and you'll find me.